Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the RC Explain channel. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a battery pack that I have that might actually be faking its own good health. So exactly what does that mean? Well, I have a pack and it appears to look fine and good in health, but it's actually not. And we're going to go and take a look at exactly why that is and how we can prevent us from having a battery like this and then continuing to use it. The way that we're gonna go about this is I'm gonna take a look at four specific areas. We're first gonna go and take a look at the condition of the battery pack as it sits today. This includes the voltage state of each one of those cells as well as the physical condition of the pack. The next thing that we're gonna look at is the charge and then discharge cycles. Specifically, we're going to discharge this, the battery pack first, and then we're going to go and charge it back up. And lastly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about five rules on how you can actually avoid having a lithium polymer battery pack fake its own good health when it's actually not in good health. So the first thing that we have here is a battery pack that appears to look okay and we do see that the pack's voltage is at 4.20 volts or so and all the voltages are quite consistent. Nothing here is too alarming. However, let's go and jump right into a discharge cycle and start to talk about what's going on there. We start off our discharge cycle here at a rate of 60 watts, which is gonna be about 2.25 amps and progressively go up as voltage comes down. We'll take a look at the five minute mark here, our internal resistances of the cell as well as voltages. We do notice that there are differences there on cell three and cell six in terms of internal resistance and voltage. However, it's a very small amount of deviation, nothing too alarming at this point. We'll see how this continues to trend as we look at it twice more. So here we're gonna go and take a look at where we are. This is roughly the beginning of the charge, but now we're starting to see some differences here. We see internal resistance 3.8 versus 4.8. That is quite significant to us. And the voltages, they're not too far off, but they are suggesting something is wrong. Now we're at the end of the discharge here. We see that the internal resistance of 5.5 versus 4, that is quite significant to us, and the voltage of 3.65 versus 3.71, definitely suggesting there is an issue. We will terminate our discharge right here. Now that the pack is discharged, let's go and top it back up to 4.20 volts per cell and see if we notice any issues or concerns there. Now we're taking a look at our charging cycle here. We're gonna charge it at 7.2 amps. This is a limitation of the charger or the power supply, I should say, for this particular charge. First thing we're gonna look at is what happens here at the five minute mark. We notice that the cell's internal resistances, there's a couple significant differences that we already see with the internal resistances, but it's not yet fully showing up in the voltage values. We do see a difference with those voltage values, but we're gonna see more results here very shortly. So here we are 15 minutes into the charge, and again, we see 4.5 ohms on cell six versus 2.9 milliohms on cell five. The differences here are quite significant. The voltages that we are seeing are also quite significant, 4.1 versus 4.04, .04, and all the rest of them there matching around 404 to 406. But we have significant voltage differences on cell three and cell six. Here we can see that the charge is nearly complete, voltage is at peak, and the current is ramping down. Although it does appear like the current is stuck because of the issues that we're dealing with on these cells. Here we see a cell at 4.18 versus 4.2 for all the rest of them, and the internal resistance at this point has no real significance to us. The voltage differences are definitely telling us that we have an issue with cell six and cell three. This goes to show us that the evaluation proves that the battery pack is definitely not in good health. There you have it. There's a few different indications that suggest to us that this battery pack is not performing at its maximum or peak performance level. In fact, this pack is performing rather poorly to the point where it can no longer be used in its intended application. This is a 6S EDF jet. I can no longer use it in this type of application. If I were, I probably would not have a jet today. Another big point as to why we can't use it in one of these high drain type 
environments is because when near the end of its discharge cycle, the internal resistance of a couple of those cells there is so high that those specific cells get very hot to the point where it becomes dangerous. This pack essentially cannot work very well for any real application of radio controlled. In fact, this is the battery pack that I used to the slot car track that was converted to RC. If you haven't checked that video out, well, I'll leave a link in the description below. Here are the five rules that will make certain that you don't go and place a battery pack into your radio control vehicle that shows signs or indication that your battery is in a poor state. Rule number one, you want to make sure that you check the cell voltage of the pack just before you go and drop it into that radio control vehicle. Just before you plug your battery pack in, check that voltage, make certain that all the cells are very close in voltage and of course at 4.20 volts per cell or somewhere there about. Another good point is measuring the voltage right after you've completed a run. After that discharge cycle, you want to measure the cells and make certain that they are around the same amount of voltage from one another. If you have one pack that has a cell at 4.20 volts per cell and another one within the pack at 4.16, this is a suggestion to you that something may actually be wrong. It's a good idea to go investigate that and see if you can work out the issue there. If not, it probably is time time to decommission that pack and throw it in the garbage. Rule number three, it's a good idea to always know the internal resistance of your pack and consistently take that measurement from a specific part of your cycle. I prefer to do this during the charge cycle and the first number that comes up on the charger. This is about a minute with my specific charger. Around this time, consistently every single time, is going to get me a good reference value to compare today versus, let's say, six months from now. You want to make certain that all the internal resistances of the pack are within close proximity of each other. Rule number four, your battery pack, when it goes through the charge cycle, should never get warm. You should not be able to see or feel a difference as you charge it up. This pack that we used as an example for this video ended up getting hot on one side. This is a definite suggestion that there's an issue in a pack, and I highly suggest any battery that gets warm to the point where you're only charging it between 1 and 2 C and you can feel a difference in temperature, I'd highly suggest disposing of that battery pack. Rule number five, this is a good point when it comes to the actual charging cycle of your pack. If you notice that near the end of the charge cycle, it just takes forever for your charge to terminate, this is a sign that you have a poor performing pack and you may want to consider getting a new one. This could be happening to you for two different reasons. One, you could have a pack that has a very high internal resistance and that just means it's gonna take forever for the charge cycle to ramp down to zero volts. The second reason this could be happening to you is because your charger has to go through a balancing sequence near the end of that charge cycle. Now this is something that really shouldn't be happening with your charge sequence, especially every single time. What happens is, is you go and you charge up your battery pack last time that you ended up using it and it gets that balancing sequence done there. Then you discharge the pack in your radio control vehicle and you charge it back up. During that discharge and charge cycle that you just made, your battery pack's cell voltages should be more or less equal from one another. And it shouldn't deviate that significantly, especially over just the last run. If your battery pack has to balance out the cells, much like what we saw in our example today, that is a definite sign that something's wrong with that pack. Well guys, I hope you learned something new in this video and can use this to make certain that you have the best performing lithium polymer battery packs for your radio control vehicles. As always, like the video if you do and don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.